You know, I used to think that the universe is a random, chaotic sequence of meaningless events. But I see now that there is reason and purpose to all things. William Paley's famous work, Natural Theology, attributed the complexities and function of nature to God because he was limited by his own lack of biological insights known to us now. It was in this work that he popularized the idea of a fine-tuned universe, an argument which most creationists use nowadays. You need all these sorts of fundamental principles have to be in place in order for life to occur. Wipe out one of those principles, wipe out one of those laws, no life. Paley did not attempt to pontificate modern scientific language to dishonestly appeal to the intelligentsia in the same way that creationists do nowadays. He simply stated the same argument under its proper merit by stating how clever it was that God filled the seas with water rather than milk or wine, for otherwise fish, constituted as they are, must have died. Anyone who sees the weakness in Paley's argument can also see the inexcusable and clearly outdated weakness of the creationist argument. The first is the point subtly identified by Paley, fish constituted as they are. Life is able to live and develop on this planet in response to the environment. The whole point is summed up brilliantly in the phrase, the universe is not fine-tuned for life, life is fine-tuned for the universe. The second problem being the statement is tautological. If the universe was not able to support any life, known or otherwise, life would not be supported on it and the conversation of this would be pointless as it could never be made. Paley's other major, albeit similar, argument is that it is hardly comprehensible to our instincts to attribute order and complexity to chance, chance being the only alternative Paley could contrive. Due to this being such a seemingly successful argument back then, creationists wish to maintain it and have tried very hard to announce every possible mechanism of evolution is simply non-deterministic, non-progressive chance as that defined by Paley. They often try to help their argument by giving chance a number of redundant adjectives. And so we hear blind chance, dumb chance, a chance accident, and my favourite, random chance. And finally, we hear the analogies to the function of natural or chance causes corresponded with chaotic and destructive forces, such as tornadoes, explosions, and lightning. Charles Darwin wrote about organs of extreme perfection in chapter 6 of On the Origin of Species because he knew he had to address how counterintuitive his theory was. But the entire foundation of the observation and proposal of natural selection as a creative process was groundbreaking because it finally detailed a designing process, a systematic sequence of laws and events at work that inevitably lead to complexity and order. A relatively new discipline and paradigm of science known as emergence is currently having its understanding increased exponentially. What we now know through meticulous research in fields as disparate as computer science, mathematics, physics, ecology, genomics and developmental biology is that from simple units and adaptive interaction, complexity inevitably arises. How did the embryos know what shape to take? Of course, these parts don't know how to form themselves or the system they are a part of. It's a simple matter of trial and error. Those that don't function can't and those that can function integrate. All complexity in the natural and artificial world is an integration of interdependent simple components. In fact, the emergent science of natural selection would have a much harder time explaining how a simple and robust yet efficient biological system came into being. Because selective pressures are imposed on everything that imperfectly replicates, from organisms to biochemical pathways to even genes themselves, Every variation in nature under natural selection has the opportunity to prove itself as a superior design or system. The natural laws at work during evolution are mechanisms witnessed to produce such designs. I remember the first time I, I looked in a biochemistry textbook and I saw a drawing of something called a bacterial flagellum with all of its parts and all of its glory. It's had a propeller and a hook region and the, the drive shaft and the motor. And I looked at that and I said, that's an outboard motor. That's designed, you know, that's no chance assemblage of, of parts. The design or random chance argument fallacy is much like the evolution is only a theory argument. It is based on the butchery of terminology and the use of equivocation. Creationists repeatedly contend that due to the restrictions of arbitrary terminology, a design must always have a designer when in fact what is required of a design is a design mechanism of which ironically intelligent design has none to offer. 
Theistic evolutionists accept natural selection due to the overwhelming scientific evidence and then, through their philosophical beliefs, acknowledge these natural laws to be laid down by their god. Creationists, however, deny this outright for no good philosophical and certainly no scientific reason. They deny all intermediate examples of allegedly created organs in nature, as well as all the design flaws of their most treasured examples. They then fail to realise that their designer, having no system, nor method, nor material constraint, is not a designer, but a magician. This is why creationists have it so hopelessly backward. Evolution is the design process to which we now know the organising creative mechanism, the basic materials used, and the harmonisation of both constructed into a testable scientific theory. If I were to give a prize for the single best idea anybody ever had, I'd give it to Darwin for the idea of natural selection, because his idea unites the two most disparate features of our universe. The world of purposeless, meaningless matter in motion on the one side, and the world of meaning and purpose and design on the other. Oh, you believe that selection is the only possible creative law. Pure chance, the roll of the dice. Of course, if any sort of chance was exclusively a non-designing process, and what the sciences of abiogenesis, cosmology and evolution are peddling, it's kind of silly to say it's impossible, since commenting on the possibility of something that has already happened is quite fruitless. Um, because things that have a 1 in 64 million chance of happening, happen all the time. <laughs> To presume that your 1 in 64 million chance thing is a miracle is to significantly underestimate the total number of things that there are. Maths 